So welcome to the next session and last uh, time we talked about uh, different things that we could do on the messages that are passed on the network. So that there can be proof that somebody has sent the message that there is the four things that we have talked of namely confidentiality, authentication, integrity and of course accessibility and availability can be ensured. Now what we will now discuss in the, the this session and the next session is about basically the components that are part of this uh, uh, network uh, which basically can help you achieve this uh, uh, digital signature or hash or it can also uh, help you achieve this uh, crypto like public key and private key cryptography. So what are the components that are available on the network? We will give you a very basic introduction to all these components. We have covered this in uh, well, good detail in the information security 3 course but we just thought that some of the basics we will revise uh, for people who have not done that course or who have done that course and forgotten something about it. Okay. Now first thing is the firewall. What is the firewall? Firewall as we see as the name suggests is something which will isolate an organization's internal network from the larger uh, internet and you can put rules on the firewall by which it can say it will allow you to pass certain packets and it will ask you to stop certain packets. Right. So as you see on the screen the, there is a public internet and then there is this firewall that you have seen and there is an administered network. And what the role of the firewall is to allow certain packets from the public internet to flow out, flow into the administered network and something about the administered network to go back to the public internet. So I can control both ways using putting rules on this firewall. The challenge is firewall is like a dam, you can, it, 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 you can very easy to purchase and put it. But the most important thing is how do you configure it, right? that is how you pour water into the dam. So you have to pour it with correct good water. Now how do you how do you configure the rules? Right? That is the major challenge today. So today purchasing a firewall, installing the firewall, saying that I have a firewall, these are all easy. But how somebody arrived at the rules for this firewall which basically regulates the traffic from the public internet to the uh, uh, internal organization and back from. So how what are the rationale behind those rules? These are some things that need to be audited. So somebody does a vulnerability assessment uh, or penetration testing of your uh, uh, IT infrastructure. The thing is that you should not just say, oh, if there is a firewall, yes, firewall is present, yes, tick one. And then, okay, some patches of this are all installed. They have the latest uh, operating system, etc. tick two. So these are all does not make any sense. They should actually go and audit the rules that are part of this firewall and that makes the audit uh, more effective and that is what we call as audit right so so that is something which if you are a ciso undergoing this course and somebody comes and does a vapt for you please ensure that this is done why do you need firewalls lot of reasons so at least four reasons that we will uh, come out here one is denial of service what is denial of service again going back to that four principles of confidentiality, authentication, integrity, availability. So this is something like uh, I, the, the, there is one technique called sin flooding. What, what, what sin flooding basically does is that an attacker will start creating lot of TCP connections to the firewall uh, to, to, to your network so that to your router and so the router will be and they will just open the session and do nothing or maybe send some garbage in garbage out. So your router will become extremely loaded that nobody else can connect or a genuine user cannot connect. So by this they deny the service for a genuine user. The genuine user can be a Bob who is sending and you are the allies and, to, and they want to communicate but you have sent so many extra messages, you have inserted so many messages so that the genuine user cannot communicate. This is called denial of service. Sin flooding is a, a, a technique that can be uh, it is not a technique, it is it's basically a method by which uh, uh, denial of service could be uh, actually affected on a system. And the next thing is that uh, a firewall can, can stop this type of thing. So if it sees uh, many TCP connections coming then it can cut certain things, it can see to it that your router which is beyond that firewall is not affected by this uh, unwarranted, un 
non un, uh, unwarranted connections. The second thing is that the firewall can also prevent illegal modification slash access of internal data. For example, somebody the attacker uh, comes and it say for example, replaces the government department's home page with uh, something else. This is, this is really a uh, very uh, bad thing to happen. So, a firewall can actually stop that from happening. The third thing is it can allow only authorized access to inside network. So, nobody else can come just like that. You can put a firewall saying only these, these, these people can come into the network, others cannot come. So, I could authenticate at a user level. So, can a single firewall achieve all these things? Not necessarily. So, there are, see, we have talked about some connections being dropped that is at the communication level. We have also said the next thing is that some web application could not be up, uh, modified or right so this the and some user person can be allowed to log in somebody else so we may try to safeguard we may try to attack we may try to in monitor uh, the traffic at the network level or we can also try to monitor the traffic at an application level right and both are necessary we have seen even in this slide we are seeing the necessity for both so this basically ensures that the uh, firewall is classified into two parts. One part is the application level firewall, which will take care of all the application related access controls that we want to put. Application related means this particular web application, this particular uh, you know uh, application inside uh, that you are hosting it, these applications should be touched only by these, these, these people. So, like that type of things that you can use. So, that is application level file. Other thing is that network level basically packet filtering, right. So many these packets come, these are not necessary, these are unwarranted, this they are trying to attack the system, stop them, right. So, so the firewall can be used for, uh, can, can be of two types, uh, one is to handle at a networking level and that basically packet filtering, another is to handle at a application level. So, application firewalls exist, network level firewalls also exist and both are different. Now, let us see what, what do you mean by packet filtering. I need to make a decision such that the arriving packet be allowed in or not and the deep allowed in means arriving packet is coming from the external internet, it is going to try to go into my internal system, should I allow it or not. And the other, other way is that can a departing packet that is going out, should I allow it to go or not. It both are important. See, from an external packet, I could get a trojan or a worm or a virus or a malware inside. On the other side, uh, I can also allow uh, somebody has a company secret, they can send that company secret outside. So, both ways I have to monitor. Somebody internally does not do some mischief and try to send confidential information outside. Somebody from external do not try and inject a malware into the system to uh, basically start, uh, uh, you know malfunctioning my system. So, both ways have, I may have to do a packet filtering. So, the, <coughs> the router actually filters packet by packet and decision to forward slash drop pa the packet can be based on this thing. So, if I put a firewall when every packet I can basically filter and what I can, what, what, what are the conditions based on which I can filter? I can say source IP, destination IP. So, if I say source IP, say for example, I am a, I am in a bank, there is some attack from uh, say some foreign country, those IPs will have some number. So, anything coming from that IP stop, that means nobody in that country can come and access my. So, this is what we say as source IP address or destination IP address space filtering. So, when, when a network packet comes, please note that there are some source, ad source address, destination address, then payload, payload is actually the message. When I start accessing the payload, it becomes much complex because payload is large in size, it can be encrypted, it can come through a VPN, etc. But other than that, there are the source address, destination address and other thing which we call as metadata. Typically, a router actually accesses the metadata, a, the, a, a, a network based firewall actually looks at this metadata and try to make some uh, decisions, whether to allow a packet to go, go in and similarly some packet wants to go out should I allow it to go out or not. So, the, the packet filtering can happen either by the source IP address or the destination IP address 
it can be a TCP slash UDP source and destination port numbers right from this port do not allow rather than the address that can be a port. A port is nothing but one that gives you a particular service. I do not want to give telnet service or something, so block telnet. So, if somebody irrespective of which source or address or destination IP address, if he wants to access that port, stop it. And it can be ICMP message type or it can be a TCP SYN and acknowledge bits. Based on these things, the, the, the router can basically stop a packet from going in or stop a packet from going out and this is what we call as packet filtering. So, these are all some examples of packet filtering. Example 1 block incoming and outgoing datagrams with IP protocol field equal to 17 and with either source or destination field port equal to 23. So, that means all incoming and outgoing UDP flows and telnet connections are blocked. The IP protocol field 17 essentially means UDP and source or destination port equal to 23 means telnet. So, these are blocked or vice versa. The example 2 is block inbound TCP segments with a ACK equal to 0. This is what it will prevent external clients from making TCP connections with internal clients, but allows internal clients to connect to it. So, from external I cannot make a TCP connection to internal. But So, these are some simple rules that you can put and basically protect your network from doing things. These things you do not want, whatever I put in red I do not want, there is a way by which I can capture it at the crux, at the, at the edge of my uh, organization with the internet at that edge I put this firewall put these rules and see that this does not. Now, let us look at application gateway what is our application gateways they actually filter packets on application data as well as they can do on IP TCP UDP fields as so, application gateway or firewall at application level can also serve as a packet filtering thing. So, let us look at the setup here so I say allow select internal users to telnet outside. In the previous case I said no uh, telnet outside or no telnet inside right. So, suppose I say if I do a packet based filtering I say no telnet outside, but now I can say it is no telnet outside except for some some of the users. So, how do I achieve this? This is how. So, so, these are the 3 steps that we need to ensure. First I need an application gateway, the application gateway realizes that this is a telnet application and it will require all the telnet users to telnet through that gateway only. So, if I want to telnet to outside I have to use that gateway only and for all authorized users the gateway sets up telnet connections to the destination host. The gateway relays data between these two connections. So, th this becomes like a postmaster which uh, po postman which basically takes data from here and give it there and vice versa and the router filter the filter in that router blocks all telnet connections not originating from. So, this is set up here as you see here. So, you have an application gateway there, you have a host to gateway telnet session and the gateway to remote host telnet session and you basically have a router and filter. So, so the router filter blocks all telnet connections not originating from the gateway. So, by this what happens is the gateway basically uh, disables at, at an application basically at the telnet level uh, telnet as an application it basically stops any user who is not uh, who is not authorized by your rules from telneting outside right. So, so this is what we call as an application gateway and that is different from a packet filtering gateway. So, let us very quickly look at uh, the limitations of firewalls and gateways first thing is that it relies on what you get as a metadata for it turns out it cannot stop you from say IP spoofing, spoofing means somebody says somebody makes that destination address or sorry the source address or something and sends me right. Somebody is attacking the, the, the institution or say some country that some that country has some IP address. This firewall cannot ensure whether that IP address is correct or not, somebody can put some other IP address and still send me. I believe on what that IP address is. So, if I want to stop something from say some some country X that but people in that country X can himself send uh, and I, that I do based on the IP address people in that same country X can send with some IP address Y and your firewall will think it is not from X it is from Y. So, that is one thing. So, the router cannot really know if data is actually coming from the claim source that is a limitation of firewalls and gateways. The second thing we call it as a gateway application gateway. If multiple apps 
applications need special treatment each has to have its own application gateway right that is another thing and if the client software must know how to contact the gateway that is must set IP address of proxy in web browser right so I have to go through that gateway otherwise I can't even go out like what we saw in this telnet thing right so, so I have to I have to go through that gateway and the gateway has to authenticate if something does not come from that gateway I cannot basically move forward okay and then uh, this filters often use all or nothing policy for UDP so I cannot have selected things for especially the UDP protocol so I I say either, either I save my head completely or full grow I do not have an haircut right so this is this is the same thing here so use all or nothing and the trade off is the biggest trade off is degree of communication with outside world with level of security if I put more and more rules it becomes complex but at the same time I become more and more so many highly protected sites still suffer from attacks because of these limitations because I cannot put very tight rules so I relax the rules and that relaxation basically is exploited right so there needs to be something more than this fire firewall is very important application gateways are very important but beyond this firewall and the gateway we need something much more uh, also to handle these limitations we will see about that in the next session on what we claim as internet security threats.